Do you feel like your English pronunciation is stuck in a rut? You're able to communicate, but your speech doesn't quite sound natural. I think I have something that can help. It's a little trick called shadowing. The basic idea is this. Observe and imitate. Easy enough, right? Come shadow along with me today while I talk about some of the most gorgeous, mellifluous words in the English language. Hi everyone, this is Abby, an English teacher here at Mozalingua. If you use the Mozalingua app, you already get some pronunciation practice when you repeat the words and phrases on the flashcards you're learning. But great speech is more than just pronunciation. It's also about rhythm, intonation, connected speech, reductions, and on and on. When you practice shadowing, you'll acquire a lot of those elements I just mentioned naturally in one holistic exercise. These exercises are going to help your English really start to flow. One last thing before we get into the fun part of today's video. Since I'm American, this video won't be suitable for you if you're trying to learn a more British sounding or other English accent. When choosing someone to shadow, it's important to pick someone with an accent that you'd like to have. So if mine isn't your cup of tea, I'd suggest checking out a video by my colleagues Lizzie or Lisa Joy. Now there are a few different ways to shadow, but here's what we recommend at Mozalingua. I'll repeat each sentence three times. The first time, just listen. You may even wanna close your eyes so you can focus on the sounds and the rhythm of the sentence. The second time, watch the shape of my mouth and my hand movements, which will give you some guidance on stress and pitch. Then pause the video and repeat after me. If possible, record yourself this time and then compare it to mine. And the third time, really echo me. Say the sentence right along with me and try to match your speed and intonation as closely as possible. I'll also point out a few spots that might be tricky so you know what to focus on. Okay, ready to do some shadowing? The opera singer's mellifluous voice echoed through the concert hall, captivating everyone in the audience. The opera singer's mellifluous voice echoed through the concert hall, captivating everyone in the audience. The opera singer's mellifluous voice echoed through the concert hall, captivating everyone in the audience. You might have heard this word in the introduction to this video. It means something that sounds really nice, just like a beautiful opera, or like the word mellifluous itself in my opinion. When shadowing this sentence, pay attention to the word opera, which is reduced in American English, meaning that we get rid of that middle E. Instead of opera, we say opera. We do the same thing with words like comfortable and interest. I also want you to practice that quick succession of short syllables at the end. Everyone in the audience. Picture those syllables tumbling down the stairs. Everyone in the audience. Their chance meeting in the bookstore's romance section was a moment of serendipity that changed their lives forever. Their chance meeting in the bookstore's romance section was a moment of serendipity that changed their lives forever. Their chance meeting in the bookstore's romance section was a moment of serendipity that changed their lives forever. I'll let you imagine the rest of the story here. Serendipity means unexpected or unplanned good fortune like a happy accident. A few quick things about this sentence. Did you notice that I didn't pronounce the T at the end of moment? This is called a nasal flap and it's common in American English. You can use it when you have an N and a T stuck between two vowel sounds and the second vowel is unstressed. Another example would be 20. You'll hear a lot of Americans say, we need to leave in 20 minutes. Also, instead of saying changed their lives forever, I said changed their lives forever. This is called an unreleased D, and Americans tend to, I just did it again, tend to use it a lot, but only when the sound that follows is a consonant. The tip of your tongue stays up on the roof of your mouth as you transition to the next sound instead of being released into your mouth. Tend to. Did you hear the news? We bamboozled our boss into giving us the afternoon off since it's National Napping Day. Did you hear the news? We bamboozled our boss into giving us the afternoon off since it's National Napping Day. Did you hear the news? We bamboozled our boss into giving us the afternoon off since it's National Napping Day. I just think this word is so fun. 
To bamboozle someone means to really confuse them, sometimes even trick them or mislead them on purpose. In this case, the employee convinced their boss that National Napping Day was a real holiday. It's on March 11th if you want to try bamboozling your own boss. Here are two things to look out for when shadowing these sentences. First, did you make sure to use rising intonation for the first sentence? Remember, in English, our pitch goes up at the end of a question and down at the end of a statement. Did you hear the news? The other thing is the connection I made between did and you. Did ya? This is a common linking pattern in American English. When one word ends with a D sound and the next begins with a Y sound, the result is J. If you're familiar with the International Phonetic Alphabet, that sound looks like this. And it's the same as the sound you hear in words like language and job. I just started to learn Spanish with Mozalingua, and I already have major wanderlust. As soon as I get my next paycheck, I'm booking a flight to South America to go hiking in the Andes Mountains. I just started to learn Spanish with Mozalingua, and I already have major wanderlust. As soon as I get my next paycheck, I'm booking a flight to South America to go hiking in the Andes Mountains. I just started to learn Spanish with Mozalingua, and I already have major wanderlust. As soon as I get my next paycheck, I'm booking a flight to South America to go hiking in the Andes Mountains. This word was actually borrowed from German, but it's very widely used in English. It sounds so romantic, don't you think? A desire or passion for wandering, or a strong urge to travel. Very appropriate for language learners. Make sure that when you say the word to in those sentences, you're using the schwa sound. This is the most common vowel sound in American English, so it's worth learning. You're going to completely relax your mouth and tongue. Uh, uh, to, not to learn, to learn, to South America. America. There's that schwa again at the beginning and end of America, to go hiking. And lastly, notice the T sound that's missing from the word mountain. In American English, we generally replace the true T sound with something called a glottal stop. It's when you stop the air in your throat by essentially closing your vocal cords off rather than stopping the air in your mouth. You should feel it right about here in your throat. Mountain, mountain. You'll hear it in other words too, like written and button. It's not wrong to use the true T, but you'll sound more like a native speaker if you try the glottal stop. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed hearing about some of the most beautiful and interesting words in the English language, in my opinion. And of course, I hope that this video helped you on your way to achieving an American accent you're proud of. If you liked this video, make sure you subscribe to the Moza Language channel so that you don't miss the rest of our series. And until then, I also suggest liking and saving this video so you can practice with it every few days. Remember, repetition is key. Take care and happy learning! If you learned something new from this video, give it a thumbs up. Then, hit subscribe and turn on your notifications. Have a look around our channel for more hacks and tips. And if you're watching on another social media platform, like or follow our page. See you next time.